Hello and welcome to the other side of the kitchen table. I'm here with Stevie Wonder. <laughs> it's my weird eye. <laughs> I have a recipe today. You take one stick insect, fake boobs and lips optional. You take one brainless moron, pumped up chest from a gym. Who loves himself? Optional. Who loves hang himself? Hang on, I haven't looked at that yet. Okay, sorry. They can't have any talent or any brain cells. And then you put them on all islands and wait for them to mate. What show is that? Love Island. Now, we were actually asked to review this. And to be honest, I can't actually watch an episode of that show without getting clinical depression. And I'd hang myself. So we have watched reviews and read bits. You did. I was looking at pictures. I know. You you were having a happy time. I wasn't. The names are Kieran and Carrington, which is ripped straight off Dynasty and Dynasty. Um, Dallas, sorry. Dallas and Dynasty. Was it Kieran a name or was it? Kieran. Oh, it was Kieran. Kirsten, sorry, Kirsten. And it was Kirsten who shot JR in Dallas many, many, many. Well, I don't many bloody years know, do and I? And Crystal and Blake Carrington were on Dynasty, so the names are ripped straight from Dallas and Dynasty. If that is their real names. If that is their real names. Carrington Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rodriguez I, can't I can't say, say that either. At Carrington Rodriguez, and I'm not sure what. Kirsten's actual surname is that she's using. Um, now, apparently, they were a couple somewhere. A couple of what? <laughs> and he then turned up with this blonde dangling thing on his arm when they met up again. And from what I can gather, Kirsten was really cut up about this. I don't know why. But what they should have uh, done. You don't know because she was like that. Ah. Yeah, well, she was like. But what they should have done was taken Carrington and put him on an island on himself because no one's ever. On himself. On well, himself. <laughs> on himself. himself. <laughs> because nobody is ever going to love Carrington as much as he does. I mean, the, the guy is so up his own backside, it's a wonder he do not make himself coming the other way. Right there. And. Um, as for her, well, I mean, what you can say about her, isn't it? She was supposed to be standing there looking in total shock, and she was like... <laughs> I couldn't tell whether she was shocked or not, because she's had so much Botox and so much filler, you don't know what expression she was actually doing. But um... Oh, by the way, mine are natural, but so I pout naturally. Is, I do not understand... Love Island. I don't, I don't understand how anyone can watch it. And also, there have been three deaths linked to that show. Yeah. UK version of Jeremy it. Kyle was Jeremy Kyle. Jeremy Kyle. He got one. <laughs> it was amazing, and he and, got cast. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get so much flack for this. Uh, <laughs> Caroline Flack, who was the original presenter of it, said it's the best show on telly. And two weeks later, she killed herself. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that anyone killing themselves is amusing or anything no. like that, but it seemed a bit weird that one minute it's the best show on telly and the next minute she's killing herself. Maybe she got involved in a relationship on there and it went... No, she was accused of domestic abuse. Boobies up. Yeah. So... Yeah, but we've been victims of domestic abuse. No, but she was there. accused of it. She oh, was she's accused of it. Abuser. Oh, like Amber Heard. Yeah, but uh, nobody knows whether Caroline Flack did it or not because even her boyfriend, who she's supposed to have abused, said, no, no, it was a mistake, it was misunderstood. So why did she kill herself then? Because she'd lost all work because of it and she knew it was going to lead to a court case and she was known as an abuser and, and yeah. So, um, mm. but the best show on telly, yeah, okay. I mean, to be honest, I don't understand how anyone can actually watch that and enjoy it. Yeah, Michelle. Or do they just watch it to laugh at the monstrosities they put on there up against each other? I mean, nobody in nature has a face like that, Kirsten. Nobody in nature does. And they're so misogynistic. I mean, I think they just get a bunch of narcissistic, misogynistic idiots and put them on there. They said they're looking for twins and goths. 
Yeah, they said that when they were opened up um, Auschwitz as well. <laughs> well, they were looking for twins and goths. Yeah, well, twins. I don't know about goths. I don't think they're about them. But, um, you don't know. Uh, so, you know, I think the misogynistic, conceited morons who mm. they put on there. Because you know the way they talk to those girls and about them. They're not women, they're meat. It's disgusting. And I really don't understand her anyone can watch that show. As I say, I get clinical depression if I watch it. So and I the don't. thing that bugs me is they go on there and then they make me think they're celebrities when they come off the island. Well, of course they do. They do that when they go on Big Brother as well. They come out there, and they celebrity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, what do you do? Uh, okay, I, I've been uh, modelling for years. I've been in music videos. Um, I've done film roles. I'm more famous than any of them, and I'm not having this nibbity, am I? No. Yeah, you're going to get in the hot tub after this. What hot tub? We don't have a hot tub. I can put a big pot out there and make a fire under it. It's fine, that. I don't want to be boiled to death. But, um, you know, what What the hell is this all about? I mean, yeah, we were asked to review it and cover it. I am reviewing it as best I can from what I have seen and I was asked what I think of the debacle. Keep your legs closed. That's a debacle. That, that is, it, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. It it's is. like getting two strange species and putting them together and hoping that they mate. I mean, if I was there, I would be trying to slit my wrist with the cocktail stick that was in my margarita you know it's just they put you don't on, drink margaritas am i you don't they, they put them on a tropical paradise and let them simmer i don't want to be and see if any scandal in any scandal in shoes now i'd rather be in a wintry winter wonderland oh so would anyone with half a brain cell <laughs> more more potential for snuggling and stuff yeah there. But, um, no, they, they put them in a sun-drenched island where they've got everything at their fingertips, including each other. And let's face it, I have never, ever, ever, in all the years they've run Love Island, seen anyone overweight on it. I have never, ever, ever seen anyone on Love Island actually behave like a normal human being. Never seen anyone on Love Island who's over the age of about 20. No, that's another thing. I mean, they say, oh, it's cross-section and pandemic. You're looking to learn. <laughs> I'm sorry, there are more widows about and divorcees. But then I suppose nobody wants to see the barmaid up for, who's over 40 chasing around after young men, but... Who oh, said so they had to be young men? They generally are if it's barmaid over 40. <laughs> But, I mean, or even if it's older me. But the thing is, these shows are so obviously made up. Like Hollyoaks. There's Holly like Oaks. one older person on that. Hollyoaks is actually a soap. It is the worst, worst soap. I mean, it's supposed to be a town. A town where everyone is about 30. Yeah. And nobody smokes. And nobody does drugs. Mm. I don't think, did they have a drug store in London? I don't think they did. Mm, I, think um, oh, I don't watch Holly Oaks, what are you asking me? Well, it was all over the, it would have been all over the internet, it usually is. It was a gay thing, I know that much. What, well, Holly Oaks? Yeah. Oh. The gay thing's been done to death today. Yeah, I mean, come on. And, I mean, we're, we're, we're filling you in on real life drama. We're not on the sun and drenched island chasing men around. I said to Michelle yesterday, I said, we should make our own reality TV show because we have so much drama in our lives that it would knock all the other reality shows out of the water with what and crap we have going on in our lives. And some of the weird things that we've done. Like when we went to Brixton and there was... They were Get giving down! Out, they were giving out um, these coupons for money off at a place called Brixton Bar and Grill. And when we got there, there was no no grill. There was no kitchen. There was a bar. There was a bar, but that was about it. Then we said, um, oh, are you serving food? And we ain't got a kitchen. And it was like, 
Okay, well, why are you Brixton Barn Grill? Couldn't they have been done with the show descriptions like that? I think so. Yeah, they should have been. Hmm. And what you was know, advertising? All these stupid things that have happened to us, like we went to the Crown Awards and we saw Rob Damiani, who is absolutely gorgeous by my head. He was a lovely guy. He was lovely. He smelled I gorgeous. I practically kidnapped him and he let me. He, he followed her. Yeah. I you get this him. woman who's over 40 going up to you and going, excuse me, I've got a bet with these girls. She didn't have a bet with us, right? She said, I think that's Rob Damiani. And we was like, oh, it wouldn't be him. It wouldn't be him. It was him. And um, she went, can these girls have quit checking with you? Yeah, sure. And he followed her over to this. Yeah, because they were standing a good, like, 11 feet down the road from me at this point because they didn't want to associate with this psychopath if he wasn't in. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, yeah, they said you're up there, I mean, I'm not got a five pound bet with them that you're, you're not, are you? And he went, yeah, I am. I went, okay, I owe you a five of you two. I went, um, they'd love it if they could have a picture taken with you. Would you do that? And he went, yeah, sure. And I walked off in their general direction. He's behind me. <laughs> So, yeah, I sort of... She'd come to get the girls and instead he followed her over. Yeah. I abducted <laughs> Rob Damiani and Keir Kemp from Fearless Vampire Killers who was on the phone to his mother at the time. I've got them. I've got my daughter going, I want a picture, I want a picture, I want a picture. Yeah, I couldn't help it to take So I, I abducted him as well. I mean... But he said, so... his phone rang and she went, he went, oh, sorry, it's my mum. And she went, oh, you've got to take that then, it's important. <laughs> So, you know, you've got me abducting people and you've got Michelle taking us to the Brixton Bar and Grill that was a bar. Uh, I got offered skunk. Yeah, this guy's going, you want skunk? We're like, no, thank you. That hanging out his car window. Do I look like a drug taker? I got fobbed, not fobbed, swabbed in Lanzarote Airport. I get bloody people ask me what skunk. We asked, we got asked about the skunk if you want to twi twice that night. Now, back in the 80s, many, many, many moons ago, my nickname was Skunk, not because I, I smoked it or anything, but I had a blonde streak in my hair. And so they she call me says. a skunk. Oh, no, it's because you smell like one. <laughs> skunk or Peppy was my nickname. And we were walking along and someone went, hey, Skunk! And I thought, not re not realising that I don't I look nothing like I did back in those days. Nothing at all. You wouldn't know me from then. And I thought, oh, he recognises me from the old days. And I went, yeah, and he went, he's 20 quid. I went, you try to tell me, sell me skunk? And he went, yeah. Oh, but then again, yeah, like, you. my mum doesn't know about this. Well, I did tell her, but I don't know if she's listening because she does that occasionally. I was going to work. Now, when I went to work, I was wearing black jeans with Vans. And a top of some description because they didn't give me the uniform. Well, you usually wear a top. You're not usually yeah. topless. No. And I had my coat on because it was it was it was cold. So I was going to work. It's like February, and this guy came up to me and went, "Do you smoke weed?" And I was like, "No, I don't smoke weed." He went, "Do you want some?" I, went, I just told you I don't smoke weed. And then someone else asked me if I deal weed, and I was like, "Do I look like a drug dealer?" And at one time we were at a rock and roll thing, and this bloke went, "Do you want a sniff?" I thought he was offering me to, to smell his aftershave. Well, that was funny. <laughs> and Candy's gone, Mum is offering you cocaine. And oh, no, thank you. But I wouldn't mind sniffing you. What have you got on? Uh, you go both. And, oh, okay. Moldy carpet. Mm. Mm. I think you go for soft shave. It was like moldy carpet. The new one's not bad, though. The scent, that's what I nice. But It's got caramel in it. I wonder if Love Island smells of it. Mm, well, probably smells, well, I'm not even, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you there. can tell, we really like Love Island. It probably smells of fake bacon, other stuff that I'm not going to mention. Does it actually give anybody else clinical depression or is it just us? And have you smelt fake bacon? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. There's like a pneumonia tang to it, definitely. It's horrible. Now, I bleach my hair, right? I This side is bleached, yeah? So I use pneumonia, uh, ammon ammonia. Pneumonia? Uh, pneumonia. I use pneumonia on my head. No, I use ammonia on my head. And we all know that ammonia smells like pee, right? Right? Yeah, and it burns your nostrils. It smells absolutely disgusting. But once I've washed my hair and washed the blonde out, the smell goes away. 
It doesn't happen with fake bake. You stink for about a week. It pongs. I mean, someone told me it smelled like cookies, but I could smell, still smell this under smell of ammonia. I, it's it's. Yeah. I've worked in beauty shops and I've like worked with people who who cover themselves in it, and it ain't nice. And you smell like pee. And, and why do you want to look tanned you in look winter? Orange. It does go orange, and even when you have the spray tan, at first you're mahogany. Yeah, but like Michael McIntyre said, you know, you usually just go down to your ankles. And he says, have you been somewhere nice in your socks? But the thing is, when you when you have a spray tan, you're usually like mahogany colour. Then you shower the next morning and that goes, but you go very orangey. Yep. So what is the point in looking like you've been tanned? And why do you want to go and get, like, this is the thing in the Christmas of the Cranks with the sunbeds. Why do you want to be tanned before you go on holiday? The whole point of going on holiday is to get a tan I can see, while you're on holiday. I can see a bit of point to that. I can't. I can't. If you've got a tan, you don't usually burn. No. Yeah, but this is a fake tan. Yeah, but some of them go and lie on beaches to get a tan before they go. And With if that, it's a sunbed... That's not too bad. If like, it's a sunbed, that is still UV. So Dangerous. You've got a tan... Before you go on holiday, so as you can go out and you don't burn, that I think that's the theory behind it. I think it doesn't work. I've been tanned and I've burnt. It doesn't work. Yeah, but I think there is some some I think that's yes, the theory. The goth has been tanned. The ta the goth has been burnt. Let's be honest. I'm sure I remember my back. Yeah, you're like a critic. But I mean, I have actually been tanned as well because my skin is stupid. And at the moment, I am deathly pale. I had no makeup on yesterday, and I was talking to my friend Michelle, and I didn't even recognise myself. I was so white. Like and yeah, <laughs> I'm really pale at the moment because I don't go outside. And um, I was talking to my friend, and I was like, wow, I'm so pale. White and a bottle of Tipix. Thank you. And um, <laughs> like. When I go outside and it's sunny, I get these freckles. I usually get burnt across here as well, so the freckles are really like. What you don't realize about Kaylee is she is actually pretty much ginger. My eyebrows, because they're drawn on, I have white eyebrows. This is how bad my tan is, right? And it's burnt as well, because I usually burn across here. But my eyebrows, because I tan, yeah? My she eyebrows goes, are still there. She goes three different colors. We've got this area. Which is sort of like an eggshell white. Then we've got this area that you can't see for freckles. And this area that's actually brown with two white lines where her eyebrows were. And she can never get them in the same place twice. So you've got the white lines. And she then uses them as guidelines. You have the eyebrows. rest of my body, which is brown. Or red, depending on where I go. Well, this part, the belly was brown. When we went to Lanzarote, the belly was brown. Because it was out all the time. And everything else, her legs that were also out all the time, were like fish belly white. Yeah. So she's... But I went out, this was when you wasn't with me one year, and I, w I was getting into bed because I was having a nap. That was with the sun, the sun, I don't remember I told you about that. Mm. And my ex fiance looked at me and I went, oh my God. And I was like, what? He went, you burnt. I went, no, I'm not. He went, you are. I went, where? He went, look at your thigh. And my whole thigh was like red, and I was like, oh, that's not good, is it? And your arm, I was like, what about my arm? Like, your arm is burnt. I was like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and he was like, are you not concerned? I went, not really. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't even know I was burnt, and then he was slavering on aloe vera. But the thing work. is, you know, I didn't turn the lens right apart from my feet. <laughs> feet were really brown. My I feet thought it was dirt. Now, most of the time I had my shoes on as well, so I don't know how my feet went brown, but they did. Maybe it's because... Your legs of, got a bit tanned as well. Maybe it's because I kept taking my shoes off and running in the sea every but time I, I saw But I thought it. that she had dirty feet, and I'm like, Mum, your feet are disgusting. Go and have a shower. She went, I had a shower, like, yesterday. I went, go and have another shower because your feet are dirty. She came out of the shower, she went, is that better? I went, no. I went, did you scrub your feet? She went, no. I went, well, go and scrub your feet. She went and scrubbed the feet, and she went, is that better? I went, you're tanned. Your feet are tanned. I don't know how my feet got tanned. This is the weird thing. I mean, I had my shoes on most of the time, but then every, nearly every time I saw sea, I was taking off my shoes and running. And it's an island. So there was a lot of sea. Yeah. It's but not a very big island either. I didn't do it at night. I didn't go doing it at night. Cause you, you can't go on the, on the beach at night. at night. So I didn't do it at night. But if we were out during the day, if we were out at one of the cafes having a cup of tea and I saw sea, 
that was it. I, I was I was in. I was only paddling. I wasn't like going swimming or anything like that. She can't swim. No. It would have been funny. She would have drowned. Yeah, and you would have been going, Mum, Mummy, <laughs> Mummy. She wouldn't. She would. She does actually love her mum a bit. She wants me to. I was joking. Um, Wait, will you stop putting your towel up in between I spent my legs? I've whole holiday in Lanzarote Terror for the volcanoes were going to erupt, you know, because that would have been just our luck as well, wouldn't it? But, yeah, so um, I, I do tan, and she just told everybody that I'm the gear. Thank you, Mum. Could have made it worse, could have told him your age. No, don't do that. <laughs> She's so mean. She's always threatening to tell my age and stuff. You do things to me. But I've got... Okay, so I've, I'm ginger with hazel eyes. But she's ginger too. Copper. Ginger too. She's still ginger, but it's copper. But she's got brown eyes. I got the short end of the stick because I've got hazel eyes. No, you've got hazel eyes because your dad has got green eyes. Well done. And your dad is also ginger. So I've got a ginger mother and a ginger father. I was bound to come out ginger. But she ain't no. got the freckles. Mm. Not as bad as me. Oh, they did come out in lines, right? And the freckles are spreading. They're going down my arms. The thing is, neither of us, neither, neither me or your father will carry ginger. But we both. Do you know what, though? Like ginger in This there. is a really nice... Right, her eyes. We all know her eyes are buggered, right? And I was sitting opposite her in her calf in Lanzarote because I was having a drink of Coke with her. Went out for a breakfast drink, Coke. It was hot, and um, we're drinking this Coke. She went, "What is that on your lip?" And I went, "What?" And she, "You got a thing on your lip." And I went, "It's a freckle. It's been there forever." She went, "I can see it," which made me even like more conscious of it because I was like, "Oh dear, if she can see it, then everyone can see it." And it's this one freckle, and it's still there even like now, and it's yeah, but not hot. Not the weirdest things now. My eyes no are sun. terrible. Half the time I can't even see what I'm looking at. My eyes are ab absolutely terrible. And we were sitting in here one night and I went, there's a caterpillar on the floor. She thought I'd dozed off and I was dreaming it. And I went, no, there's a little green caterpillar crawling across the floor. I wish she a go. Yeah, no, there ain't. I went, there is, it's there. And she went, there is a little green caterpillar crawling. How did you say that? I went, I don't know. No. That was years ago. But um, we had an issue a few years ago as well, was before our eyes were playing up, with a ladybird in the bathroom. Now, we like ladybirds. She likes them because they're spotty. We don't like insects, but we like ladybirds. Get down, Tiggy. And um, the cats were going mad trying to get this ladybird, and I was like, oh, dear. So I called my mum. I was like, mum, because I had my hands around it, trying to stop the cats from getting to it, because I couldn't pick it up because they were all over me. And I was like, no. And I called my mum, and my mum had to come up and get it, and she was like, I mean, the cats are going nuts and we had to shut the cats out the bathroom to save this ladybird and then the ladybird didn't want to go into your hand and she was like trying to scrape it up she was going come on and we finally got it anyway and she let it go she had the little poem and let it go ladybird ladybird fly away home your eyes on fire and your children are long that's quite rude that's quite cruel really because you might have played the thing like fart like rats on fire with the babies. But the question we were on was actually, we were, the topic was Love Island, and we want to know if you've seen it, does it give you clinical depression? Do you think that they all need a brain transplant? They don't have brains. Exactly, so they need one. They need brain donation. So please let us know your views on it, because we hate it. And I know that most people are going to go, I love Love Island, it's brilliant. But let us, let us know your views on it. What's brilliant about it? What do you like about it? Tell us so as we can maybe see your point of view on this because we don't know what the attraction is with Love Island. There's no, no, okay, X Factor's got talent on it. It has got some Is it talent. because most of the people who watch it are generally under about 40 and Hang they on. want to eye up the men and women that are on it? Wait a minute, right. X Factor's got some talent on it so don't mind watching that Britain's Got a Talent also some talent on it don't mind watching that and some of the auditions are hilarious right we don't sit there and watch it though we just really watch the highlights yeah because they're funny and you see what a bitch Britney Spears is but anyway um, <clears throat> you know we watch things like that because they're funny and diversity was amazing 
although they're getting slated at the moment. But anyway, um, so we watch things like that because talent. What's the talent in Love Island? There ain't any. And 90 Day Fiance she watches as well. I don't even know the point to that. I don't know. I Same mean, people who can't get a date. Whatever happened to classified ads in the paper? I mean, come on, people. What happened to going out and meeting someone? Why? Love Island. What is the attraction? And what is the attraction with 90 Day Fiance? Now, I've never actually seen that show, but I think the principle oh, of it Big is... Brother, where they all sleep all the time. Yeah, and then we've been having them about Big Brother. It's brilliant. You've got to watch Big Brother. It's excellent. Oh, Big Brother, yeah. We turned it on, and we must have watched it about an hour and a half of people sleeping. The most exciting bit was when one bloke changed position. <laughs> I thought he was actually going to get up, and he didn't. He just sort of changed position. And I was like... Look, look, he's moving, he's moving. And we thought he was going to get up and he was just sort of went, mm. I was like, well, this is absolute crap. And it was like 10 o'clock at night as well. It was rubbish. It really was. What were you? Hellacious crud. I mean, why do people watch these shows? I understand you want to be nosy. I understand that. Go and look in your neighbour's window. No, because the neighbour might come out and punch you one. Don't look in your neighbour's window. Use a telescope and look in your neighbour's window. <laughs> and then you get arrested. <laughs> but, Don't tell um, anybody, though. <laughs> but the thing is, what we're saying is, reality shows are the biggest load of... A God's wallop. Yeah, thank you. They're the biggest load of God's wallop I have ever seen. Because and you know they've had an audition to go on there. And they, you know, my, my friend said, oh, well, your friend, Michelle, she said. Our friend, thanks. Oh, there's really stunning women on it. I was looking for these stunning women. Yeah. I saw a lot of plastic women. Michelle, am I stunning when I do this? No. You look like one of them dolls they buy in private shops. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, but I failed to see where plastic lips and... Plastic boobs and plastic bums are attractive. The um, I'm natural. And they are so skinny. Hmm. They You've look like, suction as well. They look like they <laughs> just escaped from a from a concentration camp. Now I have been asked this question when I was working in Superdrug, my last job. How much did it cost to get my lips pierced? My lips pierced? No, not my lips pierced. My lips pumped. Uh, excuse me. And they said, "Your lips ain't real, are they?" They are. No busy ears ever suspected me of having fake lips because they're too thin. I've never been suspected of wearing false eyelashes because I don't have any. No, I've been accused of that. But I, do I, like get, I, I get told I'm wearing a wig. No, I got told my boobs were fake. And now my hair is largely grey. <laughs> hey! It's it. a lot thinner than it used to be. And it's got a weird dye job on with the roots growing out but people think it's a wig. Someone said to me actually, they went, well if you've got your lips and your boobs done, why don't you get your nose fixed? That was rude. That was very rude. They would have ended up with a broken nose. I was at work. Or if it was me. I was at work. I would have said, mind your own business. And I said, I'm not got fake boobs and fake lips. I said, they're natural. Oh yeah, sure they are. She was actually, she wasn't actually born this way. But when she was younger, I caught her in the bedroom having passionate kisses with her boyfriend oh, yeah. at the time. And she got an infection. And the doctor gave her some cream for it. And when the infection went, Can you stop? her lips were actually larger than they were when we started. Yeah. So that's why the lips. My God! And as for the, as for the chest... Yeah. The whole family who are rather well endowed in the in the chest department. Yeah, so not fake, not fake DNA. And my bum ain't fake either. No, that's just crisps. Yeah. So. But it's going down in size now. Yeah, but you know why inflate yourself with bits of plastic? Because people ain't born like me. But why is it fashionable to look like you? <laughs> I'm in fashion now. I yeah. don't know, but I'm not as skinny as I. Most people. No, because the lips are boobs and bum. <laughs> well, okay. I know what to do. Eat a load of crap. Make yourself really fat. Lose all the weight. 
Then you'll be stuck with yeah. these and the bum. Not necessarily because sometimes they get skinny and just say. And then and then get some steroid cream. Wrap that, r roll that all over your lips, and there you go. Well away, you'll be like me. That's what happened. Steroid cream done this. I don't know. I think it was the infection you got. Off of you. That as well. Well, it was painful though. My lips were like. Mm. <laughs> she woke. She came in in the morning. Get up, beautiful. And I'm like no. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was like overinflated lips. You look like Katie Price on a night out. It was like, ooh. Mm. Mm. I like, what the hell? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so I, they were cracked and they were blistered, and it was really painful. Oh, uh, right. First of all, we're going to get some. That's what Cymex. you get for kissing stupid boys. First of all, we're going to get some Cymex on them lips. They didn't do anything. And then we're going to call the doctor because this isn't normal. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> so I was standing they there. They were chapped, they were cracked, they were blistered, they were so painful. I was standing there with. <laughs> Ice cubes and Cymex cream and anything trying to take the swelling down. Even cold sore cream we had. It's like, it's the, it's the throat swollen. I went, is your throat swollen? Bro! <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, went, I know what happened. You were snogging, weren't you? No! <laughs> um, right, I'm taking you to the doctor. No! <laughs> Um, because you need to go because we've got to do something about this. And what did the doctor tell you? Don't do any more snogging. Then. I don't listen. Oh, um, I don't listen. No, as soon as the lips went down, I found her doing it again. <laughs> Was it the same boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. But I never got the infection again. Mind you, it done me some good because since that day, I haven't had a cold sore. Yeah, but you're not. I'm immune to cold sores now. So whatever that was, whatever infection I had has cured cold sores, which is great. Yeah, but it was, your lips were huge. They were immense. It was painful, they, trust me. They were so big, her top lip was touching her nose. <laughs> and the bottom lip was touching your chin. Yeah, it was horrible. But And she couldn't shut her mouth. But <laughs> she looked like tell a dash. She walked around going, "Thanks, mother." But anyway, I was not wearing lipstick either. It was so painful. Like <laughs> literally, you imagine your lips cracked all the way along with blisters and cuts. It was and they're cut inside as well. Absolute agony. I don't know how or why or what it was. Well, I think the cuts were because he had a chipped tooth at the front. Yeah, that... Oh, maybe it was a germ that got in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so I had, like, really... Yeah. And don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good. And you don't want to look like this for the rest of your life. I mean, my lips really annoy me. Because in the winter, they get chapped. They crack. They hurt, right? In the in the summer, they, they chap. They crack. They hurt. You can't win. And sometimes, I hate doing this, but sometimes I have to sleep with lip balm on because they crack in your sleep. And also, the thing is, when you have lip fillers, they're not generally that even. No, mine are even. And also, look at the profile. Hey! Oh, wait, sideways. No, no. You're going to... Back of the nose. Look at the profile. As you see, the lips... That one bit. The lips are in perfect line. When you have fillers, they're like this. So, you know, and that's what they look like on Love Island. They look like they've just come out of a machine and they've all come from the same place. They're manufactured, the Barbies. But also, another thing, you can't close your mouth as much as you used to be able to if you have this problem. Because when I was younger, I could do this. She used to do that when she was sulking. I can't do that anymore. Yeah, but you have got a blooming great ring for you have got a great big bar that for doesn't you matter. as well. I can't do that without concentrating. And when I'm asleep, oh when I'm asleep it's fun. She dribbles. I can't sleep with my mouth closed. Now, I don't know whether people who have their lips inflated have this problem, but I would think that they do. Because as I say, she wasn't born with lips that size. And if you have lip filler, your lips are not you weren't born with lips that size either. So it's, it's not it's not attractive, it's not good. No. 
It really isn't. And, you know, to be honest, lip fillers don't last forever either. No, my lipstick doesn't last forever anyway. I've heard of so many problems associated with that. And do you know that there is something called breast implant illness? Mm. There are not many people, but there are some who have an allergic reaction to breast implants. And they, the actual breast implant makes them ill. Because yeah, you're putting a foreign body into your body. It causes diarrhoea, it causes headaches, it causes fevers, and they it can causes grow sickness. Out. And sometimes the body rejects them completely and they start to come out. Yeah. Now, I only know this because I watch a lot of botched. Yeah. And there is actually a lady, she was in a documentary or something about New York. And she had, she had breast implant illness, she hadn't taken out. And she's actually now doing lectures about breast implant illness because it is a thing. Right, you put, there. Uh, this has happened with me with piercings, you put something for, a foreign body into your body, your body sometimes, not always, rejects it. I mean, I've got piercings that have lasted fine. I have my nipple pierced. It started in the middle and now it's over that way. Yeah, because it's growing out because the body This, here, yeah, that scar, was from a ring I had in my lip. That, there was a scar because I had a ring in that bit and it started rejecting that. So my piercer came up with an idea of we'll put a bar in it. No problem since then. But you can't always solve it by doing that. If you've got like an implant that's coming out of your skin because your skin is rejecting it, it's not as simple as sticking something else in But you use your nose, it. your belly button and your naughty bits are fine. My nose. I said you use your tongue. nose, your naughty bits. and Your tongue's fine as well. Just as mine. But, um, you know, it's just, I don't know why people want to put themselves through that in the name of beauty. I mean, there are little, you can stuff your bra for goodness sake. I mean, there was that saying, wasn't there, what nature's forgotten, I'll stuff up with cotton. I mean, you don't need to, you don't need to put Idiot. yourself through absolute agony just to look a certain way. And why do you want to look like everyone else anyway? You know, a bit of variety is the spice of life after all. <clears throat> and so all my friends are going trendy, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. And I'm why? so looking like this. I've looked like this for the last 40 odd years, you know. Yeah, yeah, but I've stayed like this and sometimes I'm more extreme than this. It's we never, know this. It's never going to go away. So. And you've gone trendy. Yeah, I haven't. This is how I am now. This is me forever. When I'm 90, going to get my bleach, and I've got half red and half black hair with all my makeup on, and I look like a complete mess. And I'm doing on to Michelle's arm going, Come on, we're going to get our old day. Hey, I should have a man by then. Come on. No, I can see you. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to get me old age pension. I've got to go and get Darren some fish for tea. Darren? Well, I don't know what his name's going to be. Okay, Dario, some fish for tea. I want Dario, that's sir. Uh... Porto, some fish for tea. <laughs> Whatever. But the two's better. You know, I can just see these two old girls. <laughs> and this one will still have red and black hair and skulls and... <laughs> Wearing platforms. <laughs> Wearing plat well, fishnet tights. Yeah, she'll have the um, what, Zimmer frame because she can't walk on the platform. So fishnet tights and a short skirt, and the boobs hanging out because that's always how I look. Yeah, but your boobs will be down here. Yes, but Wonder Bra. <laughs> so yeah, you know, but don't do the don't go the plastic route. It's not worth it. It's... You've got I love that time. tape taping up my whole face. And did you know people are actually dying because of a Brazilian butt lift? Yeah, because it's bad. They take the fat from another part of the body, and that fat doesn't anchor itself there. It's just floating around. It's just floating around. And if that finds its way into your lungs, you are dead. One little bit of fat can kill you. And it's not a nice way to go either. It's very painful. Mm. Well, it's liver um, failure, isn't it? It's complete organ failure mm, because you're basically suffering. So why? From the inside out. You why do it. people want to have a great big bum anyway? Well, if, that, if that was this was like twenty years ago, they go, "Oh look, here comes barge bum best." 
And it wasn't attractive. It wasn't considered. I used to get taken the Mickey out of at school because had big boobs. Wasn't considered attractive. It wasn't considered something that anybody wanted. And then when I got big lips, they started taking the Mickey out of me with my big lips. So what happened? I mean, why do people want to look like that now? I mean, I'm hoping that one day wonky eyes will be the the in thing. Apologise for that. I'm hoping that one day uh, wonky eyeballs will be the in thing because my eyeballs are very wonky. The cats are fighting. The cats are always fighting, but we don't always have someone yelling. Swearing. But we apologise. Mm. But that's why, with the piercing thing, I've got a scar here. See it? I used to hate that scar, but I kind of, I kind of like it now. It's like my little, little scar. So yeah, it's my little scar that I like. It's like, mm. So tell us, why do you like Love Island if you if you watch it? Because I thought it was only really trained monkeys that would watch real like that. Mm. I want to get it done again though. Mm. I mean, things like Love Island and My Brother depress me. Mm. I get really depressed when I watch them. And I don't know why people do watch it. I think that depression would be, you know, a, a less of a problem if they stop those shows. Put Jeremy Carl back on. Jeremy Carl was bad enough. It was funny. Jeremy Carl was okay, funny. Some, sometimes it was amusing because you'd look at those people and you'd think, yeah, my life ain't so bad. But um, Love Island, Big Brother. 90 Day Fiance, why? I mean, if I want to see people getting it on, I'll just go to a pub. <laughs> you know, it's it's not... Um... You watch most shows nowadays and there's someone getting it on. Look. Like most actual like, know, TV programmes. I do people getting it on. It happens Ooh, so we all got By the that. way, Ghosts have got Series 2 coming out. Oh, good. You know, I don't mind people getting it on because that's after all, that's how we all got here in the first place. You don't want to see it though. You don't want to see it. It's like darts. It's all right to, if you're doing it, but it's not a spectator sport. You know, it's not. No. Love Island, Big Brother, Night Day Fiance, you can keep on. Certain yes, things that you should just depressed. do in private, and that's that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, please. Comment, tell us why you like it. Actually, tell us how you can watch it and not commit suicide on the spot. It is, I find it very, very depressing. I just cannot sit through it. No. And Tau is another one. Mm. So, I, I lived in Essex for years. Years, and I never saw anyone who looked like that. I never heard anyone say, Rain, until I watched that. Well, that guy, the stalker. Oh, he was... Yeah, but that, that was after Towie. I never heard anyone say, Rain. And I lived in the middle of Essex. I lived in South Fen for crying out loud. I mean, you know, like, as down Essex as you can get. And I never heard anyone say, Rain. Oh, we are well Okay, hang on, hang on. Stuff. I used to hang around downtown, right, with the bench lot, which were... The alternative. See, I've been like this for years. <laughs> and Bunch I used teenagers to... hanging around in the town centre. Yeah, in our own little spot that we had. And it was known that we hung around there, right? Known. Everybody knew us anyway. Well, they didn't like us. We were known, right? And we used to hang around this little area. And everyone knew it. And they were like, okay, okay. And I was out most days and I never saw anybody look like that. I used to go to bars and stuff when I was 17 and I never, and 16, and I never saw anybody look like that. There is a song that is on YouTube called Sometimes the Pier's on Fire. It's the tune of Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. And it is really amusing. It's about South End. Yeah, South End Pier. And Lee and pretty Short much ball. everything else. Short ball. Give it a watch, and it tells you about the weirdos in South End Town Centre, and pretty much all the nutty things. The thing is, South though, Endenized. when right, it was you had this weirdness, and it was quite hard to get in with the bench. Like I wanted to be uh, when I when I was like thirteen, I sort of transformed into what I am now, and I can look back. 
<laughs> and it was they didn't like me then. No. She used to like the Spice Girls. When I was young, young, <laughs> when I was about thirteen, I started to transform into this what I am now, and they didn't like me at first, did they? No, they they, they didn't talk to me. They just gave me funny looks and all past. I was like, okay, this is not good. Got to about fourteen. No. When I hit about 15, they started sort of taking a little bit of notice of me. But still, no. Then when I hit 16... Yeah, well, you were hanging around with people who were actually part of the bench lot as well, so they couldn't be off talking to you without looking incredibly rude, which didn't really bother them much, but... No. <laughs> so... But when I hit 16, it's sort of like I had this whole... That guy only came up to me and started talking to me, and I was like, oh, this is weird. Because I was with my mum. And he just came up and went, hi. I was like, uh... <laughs> and they're like so you're like goth then and I was like am I like mum am I <laughs> she went kinda sure what you are, huh? she went kinda. kinda like metal head sort of kinda but I'm not sure what you are yeah and I was like oh what music are you into and I started talking to them and that and, and then they sort of became my friends and I was like okay then I went to I turned 17 and I went punk which was fine it's as long as you was in that little metal heads goth punk kind of you was fine with them so it's like okay um and i tell you what they were my friends for years and i've still got i'm in contact with some of them still yeah but did any of them say rain no but this is what i'm saying i was in town most of the time and i never saw anybody who looked like that we went down the seafront never saw anybody who looked like that we were that constantly out and we never saw anybody like that even around the back of the church and they used she used to go to the pubs and clubs now that would have been a ideal spot for them wouldn't it mm. well, for the ring brigade but as i say i never heard anyone say they but the thing is we used to go to the minerva which was right in the middle of of the sea the seafront you need to go through that sort of place to go to the, the other bars which are the trendy bars and we never saw anybody like that. They're supposed to be from Brentwood. Now we know some women from Brentwood. Oh, that sort of age group. They don't know me. Oh, well, gel off you. That doesn't happen. I don't know where this whole towel thing came from. But now there is now nearly everyone looks like that because it's fashionable to look like that. So, I don't understand it. And nearly everybody who I spoke to, you know, normal, the, the, the normal was not the goths or anything. I'm auditioning to get on Towie. Oh, bother. You know, it's really not something that interests us. It's not in our radar. You know, we don't. I like things like Todd and the Book of Pure Evil, and that's cool, that is. The thing is, <laughs> we don't watch soap operas because we've got enough drama in our own lives. We don't need to watch drama in anybody else's. No. Um, and, you know, we do watch TV. We watch Todd and the Book of Pure Evil. Once Upon and, a Time. Um, only mm. Fools and Horses. Once Upon a Time, Only Fools and Horses, Benadorm, come on. With me, it's more... <laughs> um, only Fools and Horses, Once Upon a Time, Benadorm. <laughs> so, Watch them too. Silent Witness, MacGyver, yeah. Crime and Death. I like. Her. She also likes Benadorm Once Upon a Time and <laughs> Oh Red Dwarf. You like Red Dwarf too? Ghosts. Oh, I love Ghosts. That's awesome. Angela likes Ghosts too. Horror, horror films. films. My God, my hair is blonde. What is going on here? Oh, shut up. No, horror. seriously, look. I oh, know horror uh, films. You like horror films? This is what I look like, blonde. If I do that, that's an horror film, isn't it? You go and yeah, there you go. That's me, blonde. That's why I'm not blonde. We like horror films and. The Gory and the Better. Serial killers, that's me. Superman. Superman? Superman. Hey, Superman. Superheroes. Superheroes. <laughs> Superman, apparently. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know, I thought the TV was there for escapism, fantasy, and information. Where is the information in. 90 Day Fiance, Love Where Island, is the information in the Tower. news anymore? Come on. Covid. Are you always, always going on about other countries? Do we live in other countries? And Covid-19. No, we don't. 
We live in England. That's me doing well, that. It is nice Pandora to know Facebook. about other countries and what's going on there because, you know, otherwise you wouldn't get any... The only thing I'm interested in right now, the only thing that I'm bothered about right now is the flights. And they're not giving you information on the flights. You have to go online and find that out. You have to go online for most things now. Why can't they go cover that on the news? Because that'd be useful. Uh, <laughs> people are actually like going on holiday or they're getting like their holidays being cancelled or something. I have my friend Michelle is the only information like source of information I have about what's going on with our flights. I have no clue. So please. And the, all I know is that the time's changed. Let us know your views in the comments. We, we would love to get a comment so as we can hear what the fascination is if, you know, anyone knows. Then do you think the news should be more that. informative than it is? And do you think the news should be more informative? Let us know. Comment, please. Comment, subscribe, share. Because Like. Like. <laughs> definitely like. Like. Because the, we can't be the only people in the world who hate Love Island. No. I should imagine most goths do. But three deaths associated with that program and it's still on air. The late, late breakfast show, one death, was canned. Jeremy Carl, one death, canned. Love I'm Island, sorry, but Jeremy Carl... Three Kyle, deaths and it's still on air. Jeremy Carl got a hell of a lot of viewers. Didn't yeah. it? And it got canned. And people are still going mad about that. So please let us know what the fascination That was my escape. Watching yeah, Jeremy Kyle. What the fascination is, and I found out that it's not even the British version of Love Island, it's the American version um, of Love Island, they're wrong. We watch Judge so, Reinald, but he's not as funny as Jeremy Kyle. Yeah, because he, he has a go at people, but he don't go all break out like a scabby Oh, he like does Jeremy. occasionally. Jeremy Kyle's eyes are just It was scary. Because <laughs> he's a dad, isn't he? So, <laughs> but please let us know in the comments what you think. Yeah, also, Judge, Judge Winter, two dogs. Yeah, he's not a dad. He's, he's dogs. He's a gay. He's got dogs. But he's a lovely gay, but he's a gay. I love gays. He's married. He's got dogs. To a gay man. Well, yeah, because he is a gay man. <laughs> married to dogs. I like I his mean, Michelle. Was this, was I like his Michelle. There was this program on some years ago called There's Something About Mural. And it was a transgender woman. And, and they had a gang of guys, and it was about going on holiday and dang, dating. Mom, I'm trying to sort out my eye. Yeah, the air, the light, even. Well, I'm trying to sort out my eye. Well, anyway, this this transgender person, Muriel, it was there was a gang of guys trying to date her and trying to find a reason why, and they, it culminated in a holiday. And they would never be allowed to wear that now, because that was terrible. Mm. And they were so insulting when they found out the secret about her, which I thought was glaringly obvious from the start, because why do a whole documentary, there's something about this woman, if it wasn't... Did they tell them that it wasn't called There's Something About Miriam? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So please, let us know your thoughts, because I think that those, those objects they put on Love Island... I can't refer to them as people even. Are misogynistic, conceited, brainless, talentless, and I don't even know why they bother showing them. Vain. Vain, very, very vain, but then conceited. Vain. So please let us they know. They are the seven deadly sins of World to One. Let us know what you see in it, please. Because I just can't see the point of the shows. To be honest. I'd rather watch a documentary of a band. I'd rather watch a documentary of the reproductive organs of a fly than watch that crap. It'd be quite interesting, actually, because yeah. I don't know how they work. So, <laughs> please, let us know in the comments. And like, share and subscribe. In the meantime, be kind. Hit the notification bell. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm really sorry that this video was late today. Yeah, but we had this problem and it's a human need to sleep. And we were supposed to get up and do this... And we didn't, you know. But then we've got an excuse because that idiot over there is drilling constantly. Yeah. And you can't sleep with that going on. But then again, you know, you're going to get that means like two videos today, one later on. I'm now. sure people will be thrilled. One about later that. on. <laughs> so 
Let us know what you think. Let us know your comments. Oh. Let us know your views. On the third, we've got a bit of a special one. Lovely. Yeah, because we're going out for my mum's birthday. And we're going to Oktoberfest. So if I can, fingers crossed, I'm going to try and do some recording in there. So please, be kind, considerate, and kind. You can't be considerate. We get more around <laughs> it, And we will see you later on Tales. Sorry, from the toilet bowl. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>